I hope Myrna, Marna forgives me for sharing this with you, but it's so thrilling that I have to do it. I have to, I have to do this. I, uh, God put on my heart to teach the deep things of God. I studied Hebrew and Greek. I've studied, I've taught Greek and Hebrew for 48 years. I preached on the, uh, the origin and the destiny of the soul this morning. And right after that, I called, I preached on the anatomy of the fall. And they're going out right now. They're going out right now. Uh, to see people built up in the Word of God, uh, Nancy in Pennsylvania just writes me notes and, and writes, she'll make sermon comments on almost every sermon that goes out there. She'll say, Marilyn's comments are so much better than mine, I don't feel like doing them, but I just have to. And so she makes them. And then people write me emails that really thrill me and uh, make me keep on going. See, the church told me the other, a couple of weeks ago, we don't want to hear anything else except systematic theology until you're finished with the book. That's what we want. I said, wow. And when I started this, they were really kind of upset because they thought that I was going over their heads and I was just, they were bored with it. And all of a sudden, kabam, the lights turned on. Boom. Now they don't want anything else. I'm teaching all these other classes. You know, Christine, you want the rest of church history. Yep, we're going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do the rest of the life of Muhammad if the Lord allows me to live that long. And I want to finish all the parables of the Bible and I want to go back to the book of We Ele Shemot, Exodus. And I want to do some more secrets in Genesis and all these different things that I'm doing, New Testament survey. All of this, I want to try to finish some of it because people need it. And I'm trying to keep the website up. You know, we're in a 5013C or 501C3 or something like that. We're, now, whatever it is, I did it the other day. I stuck my neck out and put it on a credit card and got a lawyer going on it. And we're with the state of Nevada right now. Then we have to go to the federal government, and we have to do that. And then when I sell the property, I'll be able to put some in there. And I know that more people will give uh, online, even though it's perfectly legal to give because it's a legitimate uh, write-off, even though we aren't that because – Baptist Church has always fought separation of church and state. And I'm only doing this for the website to keep it going. And so it can keep on going. Yeah. We have a bank account and everything. And that's all of the things that we've been talking about so far. Now, one of my students, all the way on the other side of the world, just wrote this to me a while ago. <clears throat> Dear teacher, you have lifted the veil yet again on something I have limited my understanding in. The teaching on soul, body, and spirit is so good. I have a number of questions still not answered. I searched all the occurrences of soul in the Bible search. Seems that God is counting souls and not heads. It is souls that sin against God, and all souls are his. Seems like our bodies, flesh, in the unregenerate state is willing to do whatever the soul delights in. As a slave to the soul, which part of us was dead in trespasses and sin? I recall a preacher who said that we are spiritually dead because of the fall and that our, at our con conversion you become spiritually alive for the first time. Are we triune from conception and did he that taught us err? Let God be true, but every man a liar. And 1 Corinthians 15.45 says the first Adam was made a living soul the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. What happened to our spirit when we became and dwelt with the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Dr. Jim, for wrestling with God in prayer and preparing fodder for us hearers. And I have no doubt in my mind that even though you are a learned scholar and have tremendous gift of speaking, that you must at times simply stand in awe of God's greatness and majesty and lacking words to describe his power and his glory in creating everything... And most astonishingly, us in his image, as for me, I have not even begun to plumb the depths of what can be known of him who is blessed forever and ever. I am praying for the future of the ministry, that God will grant the shepherd of the flock wisdom 
and clear direction for the years to come, also for God's gracious provision for all your needs, and granting you and Marilyn your heart's desire, even though we make plans, God will direct the footsteps of his people to the glory of his name. All the way from the other side of the world. And I just preached this sermon today. With the media of God behind it, it goes all over the world. The soul, the spirit, and the body. The soul, the spirit, and the body. Let's go to Genesis. The body sheath. 1 and 26. Genesis 1 and 26. Ah, Barashith, Bara, Elohim, et Hashemayim, we et Haaretz. Okay? I did that with those Jehovah Witnesses today, and they just stood there. Just like that. And I preached to them the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God will deal with their hearts. I was as kind as I could possibly be, and as gracious to them I could possibly be, and they stood there without saying a word. Struck. Struck by the magnitude of God's word. I pray for them. 26, and God said to us, let, man, let us make man in our shadow casting spiritual likeness spirit. Let us make man according to our blood flowing likeness. Brother Roger, am I telling the truth from Hebrew? Mm -hmm. And let, let him become a sovereign being and have dominion, sovereignty over all things around him. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over all the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In other words, you have the sovereignty. I have given you the baton, man. And then we know that man fell, didn't we? Now, when God created Adam, now, by the way, on your book, in your books, we're on page uh, 200 and uh, 23, <clears throat> all the way over to 238. And we're going to only hit the highlights. We're only going to hit the highlights. Now, many of you have missed the last few messages, so I'm going to recap them, okay, in what we call the Reader's Digest form. God created man. <coughs> He created man triune. Now the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father is what we would relate to our souls. The Son is what we relate to our bodies. And the Holy Spirit is what we relate to uh, our spirit. Now, I preached a message one time on how God is like a computer. There has to be energy to run a computer. The Holy Spirit. There has to be software, the Father, and there is the hardware, the Son. And that's it. Now, that's real simplistic about it. But I can't make it any better than that because I, I have to look at my computer. It takes energy to run it. It's got software in there, and it won't be anything without the hardware to hold it together. And in Genesis 1 and 1, it says, Bara Sheath, Bara Elohim, Et Hashemayim, We Et Arts. In one of the beginnings, he had created God, the heavens, and that is the whole cosmos. The whole cosmos. And then it says, We Et Arts, and he placed the earth in exactly the right place to sustain life. And where he, in that place is where he's going to redeem the whole world back to himself. And man has to be created in his triune image to do that. Now, we talked about dualism, dichotomy. We talked about triune, or what we call treism, trichotomy. Now, many people believe that angels are dual in nature and that man is dual in nature, not triune. There's a lot wrong with that, isn't there? Is it not? Is God triune or dual? Triune. triune. And a lot of people believe that, that the soul and the spirit in a mankind are one thing. That they are what they called as, they're used interchangeably, so they are really the same thing. So man is only dual. We know different than that. And uh, 
Thessalonians 5 and verse 23, he talks about the whole body, spirit, and soul. And it talks also in the book of Hebrews about God being able to divide between the spirit and the soul. And boy, he does. Yes, Brother Brett. Did L.D. Foreman think that the angels are dual? Did he? I don't remember. I thought he did. I didn't know. It may, I don't think so, but maybe. Well, yes, he does. He did believe that angels were dual. But did the spirit of Satan go into the serpent? Yes. Yes. So he is tri. That's why you're saying tri. Okay. Angels are triune. Everything is created in God's image. Are animals triune or duel? They're triune. Now, how do we know that, Brother Roger? It says they have nefesh. They have souls. Yeah. A lot of people say that animals don't have souls, but what does the Hebrew say? Nefesh. They have nefesh. They have souls. Psyche in Greek. So we have the triune. How many heavens and earth are there? Three. Three heavens. How many earths? The earth that was, the earth that is, and the earth that shall be. Try three, 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 three all over the place. Everything we look at is three. Now, <clears throat> the spirit is pneuma in Greek and ruach in Hebrew. And what does that mean, Brother Roger? Do you remember what ruah means? What does spirit mean? Like breath. Breath or wind? Like a pneumatic tool. Right? What? Like pneumatic? Or? Well, yeah, pneumatic tools. That, that, the word, our word, all scientific and medical terms come from Greek. Pneumatic tools, so on and so forth, okay? Now, when God created Adam, he created him in his image, and the Spirit of God was in him. Now, he took and formed man as he formed the dust of the ground. We know that too, don't we, Brother Roger? He didn't make him from dirt. He made him as he made the dirt. He made, he, man was form. Blood flowing likeness. Okay, blood flowing likeness. And <clears throat> he was, his spiritual likeness, but he didn't have the spirit in him yet. There's a soul there, and there's a body there. And then what does God do? He breathes into him the breathings of lives, plural. So your life was in Adam right then. Not your soul, but your life was there. Okay? Now, people believe, many people like uh, the Buddhist and uh, Mormons, they believe that the soul is eternal and that the souls migrate from thing to thing. Buddha was so struck by this because he thought he had been reincarnated a thousand times and that he wanted that soul to stop and go into nirvana, which meant eternal sleep. In other words, to go away and stop all of this reincarnation. Your people down in Hollywood, the New Age people believe in reincarnation. Rosicrucianism is all reincarnation, all of it. And reincarnation goes right back to the garden, almost, from the, from the, what we call, the doctrines of the devil. The soul is not eternal. It didn't come from someplace back in eternity over here. And, and then drop in, off and on, to people, and that you get a learning experience. I had a woman tell me one time, when uh, Dakota's mother and I were married, she said, you must have been a really bad person in some other life. Forget this, <laughs> for this to happen to you. She believed in reincarnation and all of that. Well, <clears throat> we are created in Adam, in our spirit. Now, in Genesis, the third chapter, we see the anatomy of the fall of man, which I preached on this morning also. We see how man fell. Adam actually began to sin before he ever ate because he decided to, to do it. Before he even did it, he decided to eat, did he not? He decided to. Now, he's supposed to be watching that Isha. He's supposed to be watching the woman. He's supposed to be watching her. She was his mate, and he was a caretaker of her. Was he not? Who was at fault in the sin situation. Adam, Adam was. Now, in this book here, 
I have jumped over a lot of things. I'm going to jump. I'm going to. I'm going to make all this concise to you in much shorter time. You will have to go back and listen to this a thousand times. Okay. Don't expect to learn everything you can learn about what you're what I'm talking about right now. You have listened to all of my classes, and it's a revelation in it. As you go, I always go from the known unto the unknown. You have to know what I'm talking about now before you can go and learn something else. Now, Adam, <clears throat> when God created him, he was sinless, was he not? When God created the snake, he was sinless. The snake became a room, corrupt, deceptive. He wasn't created that way. Lucifer was not created corrupt, was he? But he was created with volition, Jusuf and cohortive. Yeah. In the Hebrew, we see this, and it is in the middle voice, and it's subjunctive mode in the Greek when we see whether we do or we do good or we do bad. It's by our own volition that we do that. When Adam was created, he was created man and woman. I can't ex explain that, but the whole human race was in him. And then it says that in the second chapter that God hypnotized him. The Greek word is hypnose. God hypnotized him and caused a deep hypnotic trance to go him, and then he took from his sides, plural. Didn't come a, a rib didn't come from Adam. Sides came from Adam. Fleshes and bloods and bones came from Adam. And he made into a woman, and he took woman from man before man sinned. Now, in the sovereign, gigantic, unpreventable progress and plans of God, his eternal purpose, he created man like this. He created woman, and he took her out of man before man sinned. Why? Man and woman triune. You're not do well, women. You're triune also. Why? So Mary could have Jesus. So the Messiah could be coming into the world because Genesis 3.15 is there, remember? The promise of the Messiah through the seed of the woman, not the man. The Messiah could not come through the man because the man, <clears throat> the man brings forth life in the child. But that life, his spirit of our children, of all our children came through Adam, the spirit. He breathed in him the breathings of lives. Didn't say souls there. The breathings of lives. And he became a living soul. A woman contributes the body to the child. That's what she contributes, the body to the child. Women, you, can, you had five children, Christine. Not one time did you ever put the sin nature in any of those children. And I'm going to tell you what gives them life. Where is the life, Brother Roger? In the blood. What did God breathe into Adam? Blood. And in that blood was all of us. But Adam, he tainted that blood. He infected that blood with his sin nature. And no child in this world has ever been born without the sperm of the father. And the spirit of that child comes from there. Do you understand that? The spirit of the child comes from the father, and that spirit is the spirit of rebellion. I wish I had a blackboard to draw that three-way pie that I do, spirit, soul, and body, father, son, and holy spirit. When we're born into this world, we have the spirit of rebellion in us. And I will say this as by, by way of parenthesis and then passing this, that every child that has ever been born, conceived in this world and been aborted or uh, miscarried is a living soul. But we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ until we come to the age of accountability, and I know a lot of people don't believe in that, but that is true. A lot of people don't know whether they elect or whether they reprobate that child before it comes to the age of accountability. I don't believe God is going to let anything go to hell without its own volition. 
So all these little babies that are aborted, if they're Muslims, boy, praise God <laughs> that they were miscarried because they get to go to heaven. Brother Madden used to say that. I thank God for every miscarriage in the Middle East, he'd say. <laughs> because those children get to go to heaven and to hell instead of hell if they grew up into that hellish religion. What gives us life as a sperm meets an egg and the blood? Not one drop of blood, medically, not one drop of blood goes from the mother into the child. It's from the father, and that blood is spirit of life, is it not? And that child, we have the body, woman. We have the soul, which comes into being right at the point of conception. That soul is there. And we have the spirit. Is that not beautiful? Now, the writer of the book, Mr. Thiessen, uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of respect for this man. I'm using his book as a textbook. I could use Strong's, uh, Burkhardt, or anybody else I wanted to use, okay? But I'm using this one because he's more sound than anybody. But he goes on to say in this book that Mary was a very special thing, that God consecrated her and made her not able to pass on the sin nature because he said the sin nature comes from the woman and the man. That's not true. He did not know about the chemistry of blood. He did not understand about that at that time. And I don't know how any, well, he went into the Greek or the Hebrew either because the Hebrew was very beautiful there. Well, if the sin nature the, came through the woman, Jesus would have sin. That's right. He would, be, he would be born in sin. David says, my mother conceived me in sin. His mother did not give the sin nature to him. It was his father that gave the sin nature to him. It was his father that gave the sin nature to him. It's the father that gives the sin nature to all of Mary's other children. How many children did Mary have? She had four sons, and she had at least three daughters. Four and three makes what? At least seven children that she had. The sin nature got through her six out of seven times. Now, I say seven children because... It says there, aren't all of his sisters with us? If there were two, it would be both of his sisters with us, wouldn't it? But if it's three, it would be all of his sisters. If they want his sister, his, both his sisters are all his sisters. So there was at least three sisters. So Mary had how many children at least? Seven children. Six of them had the sin nature. One of them didn't have the blood of Joseph in them. So we see that. Do you got any questions so far? Are you learning something? Are you learning something? When we're born again in space and time, in space and time, that spirit that was in Adam unites with that egg and they become a living soul is created at that time. A soul is created. Now, God knew those souls in the eternity past, did he not? Because he's omniscient. Is he or is he not? Mm -hmm. I had one preacher say one time, only God only knew what he wanted to. <laughs> How dumb was that saying? God only knew what he wanted to know. <laughs> we don't have a God, if that's true, <laughs> do we? If he only knew what he wanted to know, we wouldn't even have a God, because he wouldn't be omniscient. And to have a God, we, he has to be omnipresent, Omnipowerful and omniscient, doesn't he? Those are the three attributes of God. If he only knew what he wanted to know. Wow. <clears throat> the trichotomous theory. That's what we believe, trichotomous. Not dichotomous, but trichotomous. Trichotomous means man is triune. Now the scriptures teach that. Now many of the preachers on... Uh, uh, your radio, if you go out there on 1410 or whatever, you're going to hear them, a lot of them teaching about dichotomy. Their man is duel in nature, not triune. And, of course, angels are duel and not triune. But, what, but we have textbooks. This is our textbook. Systematic Theology, Lectures in Systematic Theology by Thiessen. And it's a good book. 
but the number one textbook is the Bible. And the number one textbook is the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> Brother Roger, has that set you straight? Has Greek and Hebrew uh, inoculated you from a lot of the heresies that are going on and the uh, religious and theological fads? Have it? Has it? I hope so. The soul of man. What is the soul? The soul that sinneth that shall die. We heard that, haven't we? The soul. Man is triune. In three pieces. Like that, okay? Triune. Now, man was created at a single entity. Adam. And woman. A single entity. And every child is born. He is not spirit, soul, and body even though he is, but to make an entity, it takes all of those three things. You understand that? You're not dwelled, you're triune, and without the spirit, the soul, and the body, you are nothing. Spirits. What about spirits and demon spirits? Spirits and demon spirits. What do demons and, and, and spirits, uh, what, what do demon spirits seek to do? Dwell in human or animal flesh. Do animals have wills? Did the serpent in the garden have a will? Did he allow? Did God curse him because he wanted? He allowed that? I don't understand everything I've just said there. I just don't know. But I know that it's there in the Word. It's there. Do animals think? Yeah. They think. Do animals have souls? Yeah. Are they eternal souls? I don't know. Will you get to see your pets in heaven? I don't know. Is it possible? Definitely God can do anything he wants to do. He'll surprise us over there, I think, real well. We'll be really surprised. At the new birth. We're born into this world, and that's when we're born of earth. What does the word hagios mean? Hagios. 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 It means not of earth. When we're born the first time, we're born of earthly parents, aren't we? In John, the third chapter, Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again from above. Anagonason. You must be generated from above, or you will never see the kingdom of God. You'll never understand the kingdom of God or anything. We, as earthlings, when we're born in this world, we cannot understand nor see the kingdom of God. We are... Our, our triuneness is all in harmony. That's all I can say. When we're born into this world, we're in total harmony. Because where our spirit leads us, the soul goes and so does the body. And that spirit is the spirit of rebellion. And there is no controversy there at all. Everything is going with the flow. But when you're born from above, what part of you is born again? The spirit of God. The old spirit of rebellion. What happens to that spirit? It's this X'd out. It's gone. And the spirit of God dwells in us. And that's what causes the dual nature of the saved. That's where we have problems trying to serve the Lord. It's because of that soul and that body. Now, can a child of God do wrong? Can a child of God sin? Now, wait just a minute. <clears throat> it's according to what you think theologically. Because I've heard people say in hyper-Armenian groups that, that there are two kinds of people in the world. Lost people and saved people. And if you get into the Methodist and sometimes even the, some Lutheran theology, it says that when you're born, some people have the capacity to do right. They have the moral ability to go the right way. And the rest of them don't. But if you have the moral ability to believe and do and living and live in righteousness, see these people believe that when you're
baptized as a baby, that the original sin that Jesus died for is washed away, but now you're responsible for the rest of it. Got it? Caught that ball? That ball is works for salvation. That ball says that some people are able to be morally straight and upright, and others aren't. I went to Pentecostal churches when I was very young. That's all I went to. It was a entertainment. <laughs> it was entertainment. A.A. A. Allen, you know, all of the big healers and everything, this, is, this was it. Uh, what was the other guy that Oral Roberts? Many of these people, I, I was there. I was in those great big tents. I have seen these people go forward, and I've seen frogs jumping out on the ground that were supposed to be um, cast out demons. Crawdads. Oh, there are ones the crawdads, you know. <laughs> I've seen all of these things. It's entertainment. We went to these entertainment shows. In the book of Shadow of an Indian Star, they talk about Joe Paul coming out and living with his grandpa, Smith Paul, out in Santa Barbara, and they were going out there and going to these Pentecostal tent meetings, and he was sitting there drinking and laughing in the back of it, just watching the show. It was a show, people. Not one time did I ever hear the Word of God preached. Not one time did I ever see somebody repent of their sins and call upon the Lord. Hyper-Calvinism and hyper-Pentecostal or Armenianism are almost kissing cousins in all reality. Because you are the elect or you're the lost, and you've got the ability. And you don't really know whether you are one of them until the end of your life, if you forbid yourself to sin all your life. And you go into heaven without sin. You know. Well, that's not the way it is. That's the way what men say. The, uh, the Spirit of God is able to divide between the spirit of man and the soul of man. Now, the soul affects the flesh. And the spirit. Now, according to 1 John and John writing, can the spirit of God that dwells in you, can it, is it able to, is it capable of sin? Is the spirit, huh? no, the spirit of God that's in you is not capable of sin. Now, if you sin and you're a child of God, where does that sin come from? It comes from the flesh and an infection in the soul. What does the Bible tell us to do? How does the Bible tell us to live? How does the Bible tell us to, to wash our minds daily with the Word of God, doesn't it? Why do we have to do that? Because we're still, that flesh is not redeemed yet, nor is there any profession for re redemption of the flesh, is it? The flesh likes things, doesn't it? Does the flesh ever like something that's not good for you? You have trouble with it? You have trouble with your flesh? Why? I, you know, some people say, oh, no, I'm, my flesh is completely, I'm in control of my flesh, totally in control of my flesh. And these people that work up faith, by faith, where does faith come from? God, it's nothing we can, we can muster up, it's nothing that we can do. The only thing we can do to follow the Lord is to wash our minds daily with the washing of the Word. That's it. You want to live a righteous life, then read God's Word. Study God's Word. Pray, pray, and think on Him. That's why, because we're all living in this contaminated world. The contaminated world. Now, <clears throat> when we're born again, we have a brand new life in us. We are still triune, but we got something in us that cannot sin as a child of God. And that is, Lot had it, but Lot did a lot of sinning, didn't he? And he says he vexed his righteous soul, his righteous spirit. He vexed it. Have you ever vexed your spirit, the spirit of God in you? Have you vexed it? Yes, we have. Triunity of man. 
Every person, every person that has ever been born again <coughs> has been seduced by sin in some way. Have we not? What bothers me in sin may not bother you at all. You know that? Some people drink too much. Some people eat too much. Some people just sin too much. Some people have bad tempers. Some people have lust of all different kinds of things. Men and women and whatever. They're, they're, we all have these problems. We all have them. You will have a different problem than I do, but we're all living in the, our soul is wrestling daily with these problems, is it? Is it not? We have problems. But we can overcome those problems through the Spirit of God. But we will not conquer them as long as we're dragging along this flesh and the fleshly appetite in our soul. Our spirits never sin. Never. But our souls, our souls are contaminated, aren't they, by, the, by, that, by this world. Every child of God, every child born into this world is born with Adam's sin. Now, your Muslim faith, your Christian science faith, and all of this type of thing, they do not believe that. We believe that after the fall, the anatomy of the fall in Genesis 3.15, or Genesis the third chapter, culminating in that promise in Genesis 3.15 that, that we will have a Messiah, that the woman will have the seed of the woman that will redeem us away from that. The Muslim world, Muhammad taught that no man is responsible for any sin but his own. He's not responsible for his father's sins, his mother's sins, or his children's sins, that he's only responsible for his own sin, and he will stand before God with his own sins. That sounds real rational, doesn't it? That sounds really Adamic. But is it true? No. Why do Muslims die? Why do everyone, everyone, 100% fatality, death rate? Why does everybody die? Because of the infection in Adam's blood. We're born into this world, and that spirit of, uh, that come from Adam, that gives life, unites with that ovum of a woman and that thing, that child, becomes a living being. But it has the infection of that blood in it except for Jesus Christ. Because a woman cannot sin, cannot, cannot pass on the sin nature to the child. And God made it that way. He designed it that way in eternity past. And he didn't, as the writer here says, sanctify Mary so she could bring forth this child. No, every woman could have a Christ child. Every woman could. Because the woman cannot pass on the sin nature. I want you to get the gravity of that. If you want to read more about this, read The Chemistry of Blood by M. R. Dahan. That that is really what good. That's right. It it is this is medical science. Now, the Bible and true science agrees. We know that the earth at one time was all water on one side and all land on the other side. That's what it's called Pangea or Godwana, and that was the way it was. And then the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. There are theological fads that deny so much of this, that the earth in eternity path, the old earth that was created, Barashith, Bara, Elohim, Eth, Hashemai, and we are arts, that old earth was created, and that old earth was destroyed by Lucifer, wasn't it? And we have fossils that are maybe millions of years old, and say, oh, no, no, that's heresy. Oh, oh, oh. That's the Bible, people. Because the original earth was created in eternity past, not in, not in Genesis, the second chapter, and, and the first chapter there. It was Genesis 1 and 1. That's when the original earth was created. In Genesis 1 and 2, it says... 
We are its Hatiatuhu Wafuhu. We worship El Pene Hamayim. We rule all Elohim Merpacheth El Pene Hamayim. And I said, And the earth she became formless and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And then it says, Spirit God mourned over, suffered over, cried over the destruction of his earth. And God begins to put it back together. When you're born into this world, you are that chaos. When Spirit of God hoovers over you to create you again, and whether we heed that calling of the, of the calling of the Holy Spirit, or whether we reject it, that's up to your volition. We cannot come to God without Him calling. We cannot believe without the gift of faith. But there is that thing in that soul of man that makes that choice, that volition, that gift, that very dangerous gift of God, whereby we either listen or we reject God. Do you have any questions? Yes. Did you learn something? Yes, I know you would. Yeah. Got that. Mm -hmm. Adam passes on the sin nature and our blood is through Adam. And when God created Adam, he breathed in the breathings of lives. That's right. Which was spirit. He, he actually breathed in his blood. Yeah. Which was which was the DNA for the human race. That's right. So so when egg and sperm meet, it's the blood of that of that <coughs> of Adam. That gives the blood, which is the sin nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we have body, we have spirit. And so now we have a created soul. So where's, so those two things make souls. There's, all of it comes together instantly. So, Ooh, when, God, so, when, God created so we're trying, Adam, we're not, we're not doing well, we're right, trying. Right, so when God created Adam, <clears throat> he wasn't, I mean, obviously he wasn't alive yet, but... But he was just a shell. He was a form, and there would be a soul in that form, and he breathed into him the breathing was alive, and we know where the life is in the blood. So where does our soul come from? It's created right then. But that soul, God knew that soul in eternity past, but that soul became there. So that's God breathed that's... in not only the breathings of lives, but the souls of all these no. lives. He breathed in the capability of creating souls. Because God, Eve says, I have created a man just like God created, even Jehovah. She was real happy because she had created. She thought she had created this Messiah. But guess what? He was the devil and sin. Yeah, he was a murderer. The first murdering Messiah. You know, so-called. Okay. Not sorry. This is wonderful. Okay, okay. So, so I got that. I, I that I, I've heard that he breathed that he that he breathed in the breathings of life, but I thought it was just breath. I thought it was just it's spirit. life. I didn't realize it was. He life. became a living soul. Right, but when you said you know the life is in the blood, that's why God wants the one of the Jews to be so crucial about how they killed their animals and their sacrifices. That's right. Life was in the blood. Life so, was in the blood. Okay, so I got that. <clears throat> now the Jehovah's Witnesses won't take in, won't take uh, right. uh, transfusions because they they say you're eating blood. You're not eating blood. Right. You're not eating blood. They're mixed up with the animal blood over human blood. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay. Now we're not supposed to eat human blood either. We're not supposed to be vampires right. either. Yeah, right. You know, because yeah. uh, the the Nephilim were. Yeah. Go ahead. Um. Now, when when people some people think that we're triune, I believe we're. I mean, I believe. We're triune. Some people think we're do well. well. Mm -hmm. So when you use that verse about Lot vexing his righteous soul, <laughs> wouldn't it be vexing his spirit? Yes, it is. So in Hebrew, it actually says spirit. Spirit, yes. So the translators... It's actually in the New Testament. They translated, oh, it actually It's in the spirit. New Testament. We wouldn't even know he was saved except for the New Testament book. No, but I mean, it says spirit in the New yes. Testament. I always uh -huh. thought it said he vexed his righteous soul. 
Well, there's where people say that the word soul and spirit are interchanged. Right, that's what I'm saying. But what did he vex? His soul or his spirit? His spirit. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit in him was righteous, wasn't it? That spirit cannot sin. That spirit in Lot never sinned once. Not once. Not once. Because that spirit is the new, that's the mark that we have to know that we That's the brand, the mark, we're, right. we're, we're marked indelibly for the resurrection. Because our salvation will not be complete and we're, too, we're triunely redeemed. Will it? So is that why people that believe that, this, that they're do well, that they can never sin? I, that's one of the things. One of the, it's, it's bad theology. This is why they think you're soul sleeping, right? What? Well, now, yes. Now, we need to do this. The soul sleeping business. Ma, uh, Buddha wanted to, to go to sleep forever and never wake up. And people say, now the, we have the Seventh Adventist. Now, they'll deny this, but they teach this. El Aziel, Aziel. That's the scapegoat. And the scapegoat, they say, stood for Satan. And the scapegoat goes off, and he goes to hell, and the only person that ever goes to hell, the only being that ever goes to hell, not man, but Satan will suffer for all mankind in hell because he's responsible for it. Like That's opposite. what they teach. The opposite, yeah. Satan will go to hell because of, for, of him, and any person that goes to hell, they will go to hell forever, and they will go to hell because what they have done, they rejected Jesus Christ. That's a great yeah. thing. That's a big sin. We do not go to sleep at death. Our souls do not go to sleep at death. That soul is someplace, either in heaven today or in Hades today, one or the other. When you die, that body goes to sleep, but the soul does not sleep. Now, your Jehovah's Witnesses, your Seventh-day Adventists, your Herbert Armstrong, Church, Worldwide Church of God, all of them believe in soul sleeping. There's no such thing as soul sleeping in the Bible. That soul, once it has become, once it is created, is in existence forever from then on, for eternity. Now, I know in Revelation, it, I, I believe it's in Revelation where it talks that, that hell was actually made for Satan. And the devil and his angels, yes. It wasn't really made for no. humans. It wasn't made for anyone. We've made that choice. Yeah. It was made for them because they made that choice. <clears throat> yes, Satan is triune. I understand that. But he didn't reject Christ. Who? Satan. Satan didn't reject Christ. He tried to do away with him. So, he tried to kill him. So what is sending him to hell is his actual choice of rebelling. He rebelled in eternity past. And he stayed that way forever. Even... Now, let's look at this. A lot of people want to get Judas into heaven, don't they? Have you ever known old Judas, poor old Judas? You know, he was just a, he was just a victim of the times. You know, he, I mean, oh, he's bound to, he, he was an apostle, and, and he's got to go to heaven. I just can't let him go to hell. People think, I've heard that a lot of times. But Judas made the choice, didn't he? Now, is there a chance that people... According to Luke, the 16th chapter, and that's a real story, by the way. That's, that's historical. Is there any way to go back out of hell and make, a, and make another decision and believe after hell? Not one atheist is an atheist one second after they die, nor agnostics. They know there's a God, but they can't go back. They finished. They're finished. Did that man, Dives, did he want to go back and tell his brothers? Did he want to go back and, and, and not suffer this eternal death, damnation? Yeah. But did he have another choice? No. And he worried about those that he left behind, his brothers. That was a love letter from hell. I love my brothers. Please don't let them come to this place. Send somebody back from the dead that they will believe. Yeah, no. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So Satan... Well, that, that or else annihilation, like the Buddhists do. And like the seven dead men, annihilation. If you don't believe, you don't go to hell. You just don't never wake up. That's it. You don't. You never wake up. 
Christine. So, so Satan and the angels are are. I know that they're very different from us. <coughs> yeah. They, they're, they're angels. They're supernatural. Yeah, they were created in a different realm than mm-hmm. we are. So there's different set of kind of binding rules for them. Yes. Within that's the law of God. So, so Satan, Satan didn't reject the, the that there. He didn't want to say. He didn't say there's no God. Right. He he just. He just chose to rebel. He wants to overcome God. He wants right. to conquer God. And so once, so, so once he made that choice, his choice was sealed. It's sealed. And, and he can't ever change. That. Let me ask you something. In Revelation, the 20th chapter, verses 1, 2, 3, it says that Satan will be bound and put in the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. Mm-hmm. Do you think he's going to come out of there a repentant, changed person? Oh yeah, he, he's going to really raise havoc, and for the last little bit he's got, he's going to take over again. He he's a anarchist. That's what he is, anarchist. Did you learn something today? So, well, you're still asking know, questions. That's all right. This so, is exciting. So, so I get so I get Satan is sealed. He's done. So if if Satan's Satan's choice was not to not choose Jesus, then how is it not our sin that sends us to hell? How is it just our rejection of Christ? Now, we have already been paid. Jesus Christ died for all man's sins. Did he or did he not? Yeah. So will we die for sin because of sin? Uh, no. We will not go to hell because of sin. I, I, I understand. Okay, we will not go to hell because of sin. We will go to hell because we reject God's sacrifice. Because now, if you go to hell, then you will be judged for how much sin you did. But not, you weren't put in hell. The ticket to hell is rejecting Jesus. You understand that? Right. But once you get to hell, it's what you have done. There, there are degrees in hell just like there are degrees in heaven. I know that just floundered some of you out there. There are degrees in heaven. Not everybody's going to be the same. There, that's, that's what we do in the life. What we do now... It has to do with what we work, how close we will be with God, or what place the service we will be with God for all eternity. And that's why super lapsarians have to say that God's God sacri- Jesus' sacrifice isn't for all men. That's right. Because then they, that, that's how they are. But they, they also, the created. first decree was in super lapsarian is to decree the elect and to decree the reprobate. Create them. And then we have the, the decree to create after that. First of all, we elected the reprobate, and we were elected the elect. Okay? But that's not, I don't believe that, people. Right. Okay? Because they can't say that they believe that Christ was, was crucified for all men's No, sin, absolutely. Only for the elect. That, that, only for the elect. That only some can go and that's some right. can't. So I that's heard, how they get around that it's not, it's not your rejection of Christ that leads you to hell. Yeah. It's how you were it's, created. It's how you're same thing as an Armenian. Remember I said they're kissing cousin? Mm-hmm. In Armenian theology, that you have the ability to live a moral life because you are one of the elect. Do you see how they're so close that yet so far away? Okay. And you never know whether you're part of the elect until the end if you did hold out faithful to the end. Okay. Did you get something? Did you get something? Can I appreciate all your questions? Yeah, yes, I absolutely. I want to say something, but I don't know if it's going to help you. I don't, know, I don't really know it, but I was going to say it helped me. Is that forever you think of, of, of Satan and God almost being like they're equals in a way because like one's doing other, but we know God's greater. Oh, yeah. So we well, they're not co eternal and they're not equal. Right. Yeah, He's they're. Only an angel and God's right. a creator. He created him. Yeah. So not even close to being equal. Oh, right. No, yeah, no I know that. Just yeah. Rebellious. Well, that was part of that's part of the other seventy-three lessons. That Satan is not co-eternal and he is not co-equal with God. But there are people that believe that. And there are people that they say that it's a necessity for evil and good, and that's the two foundations of the world: is evil and good. And without one, you can't have. Well, you wouldn't have a world. But that's not true. That's what yin and yang are, and all yeah, that. Yeah, all of that. And yeah. The chaos and order. Yeah. 
the Babylonian idea of creation, that, that God created chaos and then he brought out a chaos order. I don't believe that either, people. He created order and Satan brought in chaos, Genesis There's 1 and 2. There's only a battle between God and Satan because God lets it. God allows it because of his law and his word. His word. And because of all of this, we find out what we're made out of. And we are sinful flesh. That's what we are. They have to admit that. It's only by the grace of God we are what we are. And only by the grace of God, for in grace ye are having been saved through faith. And that's not out of you. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Simple, simple, simple. Very, very simple. We're saved by grace and kept by grace. Where do they get the idea that, that Jesus' sacrifice isn't for all mankind? Where do they get that That's idea? what we call limited atonement. Total hereditary depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, preservation of the saints. Yeah, but where do they get do that? They get it where do they get the it Bible? from Scripture? They, yeah. they have to twist the Bible. They have to say that the all is only the elect. First John 2 and 2. First John 2 and 2. Let's go there. Let's go there and finish this up here. I, I, I really, I love your questions. I love to see you learn. First John 2 and 2. So they really only get this out of their... their they actually, their, their earliest works of, of, uh, of Augustine and of... John Calvin. John Calvin later on did not believe. He was not a hyper-Calvinist at the end of his life. He got closer to Baptist. The further he got in life and study, his, he, his thinking evolved, which is good because ours should too. First John 2 and 1, my little children, I'm writing these things to you, that you do, may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And, if, and he himself is a propitiation, the atonement for our sins. And not only for ours only, but for those of the whole world. But, they will say the whole world there is not all man. The whole world of the elect only. So then only we we go to sin because we go to hell because we rejected Jesus Christ because Jesus did die for all man's sin absolutely on the cross of Calvary every man from Adam and so the last man in the millennial reign he but died for their sin. Just white people thinking. <coughs> but, but what scripture do they use to to justify their belief that only? They go to the book of Romans and they go to different places and they really camp on that really hard. But now, you haven't heard me teach on the three points of Calvin uh, real in depth. See, see, you have to know that before you can go. See, that's the unknown. So you can't go into the known until you've got the known. <laughs> the unknown. Yeah, yeah that, that's, you have to have that key before you can unlock that door. Only, only, but also for the sins of the whole world. world that's so, right. I always viewed that as the whole world and the cosmos, like everything. Or is that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son? That's cosmos. Oh. He's going to redeem the whole thing back, and He died for all men. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And they will say in John three sixteen, that's only for those that believe. So the whosoever is the people, the whole world there is the cosmos. Yes. But here, the whole world is the, ho the people? Well, yeah. Everyone. The, everyone. Everyone. Uh, the, you have different lights that God turns on in different scriptures. John 3.16 is the whole world. It's not said all of man. It said the whole world is going to redeem it all back. And he redeemed it back because he could come to the seed of the woman without sin. And come in and redeem the whole cosmos. Without sin, Jesus lived. But any Without person sin. on earth that believes in Jesus Christ died for their sin gets to go to heaven. You know? What? Mm -hmm. Any person that believes that. Any person that will respond favorably to the, for the, to the wooing of the Holy Spirit can be saved. Yeah, so there's no elect. And, that, and the way they get around that, though, is by saying that you can resist. Well, we can reject God, can't we? Oh, we do. Say, People but do. Say, but they say the elect can't. No, that's irresistible grace. Right. 
that we cannot resist the grace of God if we're one of the elect. And the limited atonement that Jesus Christ died only for the elect. Why? Will he be free of the five they talk about? Yeah. Well, I am a modified sublapsarian. As simple as that. And I will bring that to you in one of these future quests. And I will do that especially for you too. Because you haven't got to hear all of the other messages. But I hope that you learned something here. We jumped off in the deep blue yonder there. Uh, and without that foundation on the other election and things, you won't get everything here, but you've got a lot, I think. All right? You ready to go out in the world and do something useful? Mm -hmm. Do something eternal? You will, or you will anyway. <laughs> can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. <laughs> You're going to go out and do it. Brother Brett, would you dismiss us in prayer, brother?